Audio Jungle. Good quality data starts with sample collection, and all elements of sample collection are recorded on the chain of custody form. In this edition of our online video tutorial series, we will discuss some of the important elements of a chain of custody form. My name is Sarah, and I'm from Team Suburban, so let's get started. The chain of custody form is a critical component to maintaining the integrity of the sample and plays a crucial role in communicating with analysts in the lab. In fact, it often serves as a primary means of communication between the client and the lab. An improperly completed chain of custody form could cost you time and money. Ensure it's filled out completely. There are three options that you can utilize when choosing a chain of custody form. You can fill out a carbon chain of custody form provided to you with your sample containers by your project manager. Or you can go to our website and find an editable PDF version you can directly type into. You can also print out that blank PDF version and handwrite it in the field. Today, we're going to discuss this section of the chain of custody form, which tells a story about your sample. First, let's talk about the test requested section. It's important to know that there are various compound lists, groupings, and even versions for almost every method we run in our lab. Take something as simple as total coliform. If you write coliform on the chain of custody form, we have to ask ourselves, is that fecal coliform, total coliform presence absence, or total coliform enumeration? In this example, Running the wrong method has irreversible consequences because the entire sample is consumed during analysis. Also, holding times may vary. The same example is true with virtually all methods run in our organics department. Take volatiles, for example. We run different methods in our volatile organics lab, and depending on which regulatory program is applicable, there are different compound lists, reporting limits, and holding times. In the test requested section of the chain of custody form, please be sure to specify the test name, method, and target list completely. Bottle quantity may seem obvious, but it's often overlooked. Indicating the number of bottles is essential in ensuring all sample containers are kept track of, accounted for, and are labeled properly. It also helps our team pinpoint a specific container storage location. Be sure to indicate the number of bottles for each sample. Next, let's talk about the matrix section. You'll notice there is a matrix key at the bottom of the chain of custody form. The matrix is a description of the physical property of the sample. This is especially important when distinguishing between potable water and water that must be analyzed for the compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act which also indicates to the lab that results must be reported to the respective state authority. And sample type is also very important in communicating public water supply sampling as well. This is another space that's often overlooked but is essential. Here's where you can indicate grab or composite, but in the case of the Safe Drinking Water Act reporting, it must be the description of where the sample was taken. For example, was it raw? an entry point sample, or taken in the distribution system. Again, reference the sample type key at the bottom of the chain of custody for guidance, or call and speak with our project managers for guidance on the appropriate sample type. When recording all information on our chain of custody, be sure to write clearly and legibly so our sample receiving team can easily interpret your testing needs. Do not leave areas blank and assume we will know. Chain of custody forms are an important record of work that are required to keep for many years. Eliminating important areas may put your compliance at risk. The chain of custody form is a critical component to maintaining the integrity of the sample and plays a crucial role in communicating with analysts in the lab. After sample collection, Ensuring all of the essential information is recorded on the chain of custody form will get your project off to a solid start. That concludes our online tutorial session on the chain of custody form for today. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.